there hello hello good evening to you welcome to new creation broadcasting network my name is victor boland and it's my pleasure to have you join us this evening i hope you had an amazing week um weekend rather and i hope your day went great today as well welcome to a new week um i encourage you to go in god's strength this week <clears throat> you're blessed in jesus mighty name let's say a quick word of prayer as we get into um, the broadcast today father we thank you for the hearing of faith we decree and declare that will not be the same as we hear these words were changed and we get and we move into new levels of victory in jesus mighty name amen all right welcome to you once again um i i um i i know you have been blessed by the last two broadcasts we had please leave a comment and you know um even as you share the video with your friends tell us you know one or two things that has blessed you on what you have learned or how you've been inspired um by the short teachings all right so we're continuing 25 life nuggets we've done 10 of them so far and uh, we still have a couple of them to go so we'll take another five again this week and um let's jump right into it um so the first one i have on my list this week um talks about and very interesting concept um the power of god and it says that the most powerful man on earth is not the u.s president neither is it the man with the greatest atomic weapon let me also add neither is it the man with all the physical cash or you know any kind of wealth um but the most powerful man on earth is the man in christ the man that is in christ that's amazing and that's an important truth you see the the word of god is what qualifies us the word of god is what gives us the best description you see that now because the man in christ has eternal life has the life of god resident on the inside of him basically he will never die he will live eternally so that's the true definition of wealth that's the true definition of power you see that now okay so um, um my thought comes from ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter number one, um, in my opinion, talks, gives expression to the highest concentration or display of God's power um, all throughout eternity. So what we find in Ephesians 1 is what God did when he raised Christ from the dead. And we have a lot of other scriptures that allude to the same thing. But then, you know, Ephesians 1 uses all the words that qualify that word, practically almost all the words that qualify that word power. When Paul was praying for the Ephesian church in Ephesians 1.16, he said to them, let me read it to you. He says, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19 then says, and what is the exceeding greatness? Let's take it step wisely. Exceeding the word hupapalu in the Greek means to throw beyond the mark. Now, these words, or this particular word is one of the first one he uses to qualify that power that was wrought in Christ. Okay, so he says what God did when he raised him from the dead was that he did something that was super abundant. He did more than enough. You know, he did, uh, you know, that's what, that's what, that's, he did something that gets him the, the title Jehovah overdue. That's a, that's a good, that's a good way to put it. Um... It says the exceeding greatness of his power unto us word who believe that word power is a greek word dunamis which means power that is inherent in a thing by virtue of its nature you see so that power that miraculous power is embedded on the inside of us he released that when he raised christ from the dead you see you see dunamis was released to us word who believe us word who believe or towards us he talks about that the, the beginning point the beginning point an indication of the point where that thing was actualized you see that now so god's power was made available to us at the point where christ was raised from the dead and the point where you acknowledge the gospel and you believe it that same power rushes towards you is made available to you in its fullness it doesn't take you a thousand years or a hundred years or ten years to get to that point. All the power 
is on the inside of the believer the fullness of god is on the inside of the believer all right so um then it says according to the walking that word walking is also an active word energia in the greek which means operation or operative power according to the working of his mighty power the word mighty there is the greek word iskos which means fortitude might strength you see the demonstration of strength you see that now so you have and then if you go further you also have dunamis far above all principality and power i mean sorry pardon me not dunamis now i already said dunamis exousia which means authority so we see uh, might we see miraculous working power we see authority all of these things are alluded to in these verses of scripture and um, and then paul says that this was made available to us at the new birth isn't that amazing now somebody might say to themselves well if that is true then why is that not my reality well things are first established in the spirit before they are brought to bear in the natural realm first of all so that is why paul is praying that you will be filled with wisdom and revelation knowledge you will become aware when it says you will know that you will become aware so the most powerful man is the man in christ why because he has endless life but more than that supernatural ability that is in the realm of the spirit these abilities can also be brought to bear in the natural world that's why we have the gifts of the spirit that's why we have the supernatural workings of the power of god that can be made available tangibly in the workings of miracles you know opening of blind eyes or stopping of deaf ears healing the sick raising the dead cleansing lepers you name it supernatural ideas the power of god is made available to us we have the leading of the spirit we have something more than gold but then again we have the supernatural ability also to reign and rule in this life to make wealth scripture tells us that all right then the second point is i mean that will bring me to my second point which is revelation knowledge is the penultimate which means re revelation knowledge is the apex when it comes to all kinds of knowledge it is greater than any other form of knowledge um revelation knowledge is superior to all other kinds of knowledge you see that now you know so um the revelation of the word of god is superior in this world we have all kinds of knowledge the, the, the greek word for knowledge is the word gnosis which is you know knowledge that is acquired by research basically scientifically acquired knowledge um gnosis knowledge that is generally made available to us you have sense knowledge you have common sense you know things that are general knowledge you see that now you have the things that you just acquire basically from growing up you just learned and you know how to do certain things you see how to feed how to take take care of yourself and then you, you you have you have experiential knowledge which comes from the time you spent on this side of eternity which comes from the things you have experienced in life you see that now so you've gathered experience you've learned from your experience perhaps on your job perhaps in university perhaps you know in whatever sphere of life you find yourself you know but there is no knowledge that is superior to the knowledge that comes from god's word you see and revelation knowledge there are different dimensions to revelation knowledge the first one is is what is called in the greek ginosko now mind you greek words are not spiritual words but you see the new testament was written in greek so um, normally, most of the times, we go back to the original manuscripts and get those words to help us appreciate it a lot better. So when you hear the word knowledge in scriptures, it doesn't all mean the same thing. <laughs> you know, it has different meanings. You know, um, for example, Paul says wisdom and revelation knowledge. He was actually talking about something different. He was talking about epignosis. I'll get to that shortly. Then he also spoke about, um, it says that you become aware, that you may know. It's not the same knowledge he's talking about, you know. So, um, Gnosko is basically knowledge without intellectual activity. Knowledge without intellectual activity. When Paul prayed for the Ephesian church in Ephesians 3.19, and he was praying for them, you know, that they will know the love of God. He was talking about a knowledge that is not mental ascent. He was talking about a knowledge that is not given to them by, you know, 
intellectual activity or intellectual capability or prowess you see that now the second one you'll find is the greek word aido you know a-i-d-o which we see that in ephesians chapter one where it says that you know um, ephesians one in verse 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know that means that you will become aware that means you know it will dawn on you all of a sudden basically that you may know you also find that in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 you know that scripture says that and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose that we know it's a knowing it's an awareness you see we have it's just a supernatural or a spiritual consciousness that comes from our knowledge of God from our knowledge of his word and then ultimately we have epignosis which simply means precise and correct knowledge. So all of this form revelation knowledge, but then we have epignosis, which means precise and correct or accurate knowledge, the revelation knowledge of Christ. You see that now. Um, and, you know, in, in the New Testament, um, <laughs> more than about 20 um, times um, in the New Testament, you know, about maybe perhaps 15 to 20 times, Paul the Apostle uses that word, um, that word knowledge, you know, he uses it several times. That word epignosis, he uses it several times. It's revelation knowledge, basically. Um, epignosis, he uses it several times in the New Testament. And uh, now, revelation knowledge doesn't mean that the man who is born again, um, you know, it's not saying that the man who is born again knows everything completely. Revelation knowledge um, simply means that the power of the scripture, you know, has overcome us. The power of the scripture has overcome the one that has believed. It means that now we get it. It simply means that the scripture has authority over our lives. Revelation knowledge means <laughs> that the scripture influences every aspect of our lives. You see, that we are thinking from a superior and a higher plane. We are thinking the thoughts of God. That's what revelation knowledge is. And it is superior to every kind of knowledge. You know, I, I, I quoted that scripture in, in 2 Corinthians 3.16 last week. And I said that, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. And I said that word profitable also means that the scripture has an edge over every other thing in life. The scripture is a supernatural and spiritual advantage, basically. All right. Okay, so... Uh, I've dwelt on those two very, very important points. Uh, I'll just rush through the, the rest of them. Uh, the third one is that through success is measured by the quality of men that rise through us. And I put in bracket, Jesus knows best. That's the truth. True success is measured by the true success is measured by the quality of men that rise through us. That is very powerful. It simply means that we should live our lives for posterity. That there is no amount of success we can achieve on this side of eternity that will count for so much if we have not been able to raise people. Think about it. The legacy that Jesus Christ had when he came was the 12. And maybe many other disciples who followed him and believed in him. The legacy he lived was in the words that he said. The, the, the things that he taught and the same thing went the same thing goes for the apostles um you know, you know the church of god is, is a gathering of people human beings saints you see so the model of the gospel is life pouring upon life and you know paul paul said something in um i think it's uh philippians 4 1 he was talking to the brethren there let me just pull that up um okay it says therefore my brethren dearly beloved and longed for it says my joy and my crown so um so steadfast in the lord my so stand steadfast rather in the lord my dearly beloved paul referred to them as his joy and his crown the word crown there simply means reward you see that now so when somebody ran a race in that time they rewarded them with a crown it's basically like what happens in the olympics so uh, it means that the fruits of his labor, the fruit of his ministry, he was referring to them as men, crown, his crown, basically. So, 
um, the true definition of somebody who is a success is the quality of people that rise through them. So we should we are not we are not supposed to live our lives for ourselves alone, but we should be conscious of discipling others, raising people, um, constantly pouring into people. You know, sacrificing ourselves for for the good of others, um, basically. And then um, I also said that experience is not everything. That this is uh, point number four. Experience is not everything, but it counts for a whole lot. Learn to lean on the wisdom of the wise. Experience is not everything, but it counts for a whole lot. Learn to lean on the wisdom of the wise. Experience is not the best teacher, like they like to say. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. But experience is a very, very good teacher. It will be unwise for you not to learn from your experiences or for you to repeat your mistakes and because we are creatures of habits sometimes we naturally you know we are naturally tend to repeat the same things but we are supposed to learn from our experience and not just our experience but learn from the experience of others it's a better way to learn <laughs> let's put it that way somebody has walked that path before um, sit under them get all the wisdom that's required so that you can get it easier you, you know god's god's design is that things should get better with every generation and even in the systems of the world things get better with every generation you know with every as time passes things evolve and things get better so the same things apply to us in life the same things apply to us in things of the spirit what took somebody 10 years to get you can just gather the experience learn from their get from their knowledge and be able to achieve that in one year sometimes even in a couple of months all right finally for today <laughs> this is more or less like an admonition it says don't act your age act the word don't act your age act the word you know there's some stuff that we just grew up saying which are not really wrong there's nothing wrong about that statement but sometimes when you look at it more holistically um just like saying to somebody follow your heart question is how do you know what's in their heart it's a good idea to for one to follow it means basically follow your intuition but then again i don't know what's in your heart so that's not a good advice you must tell people to follow the leading of the spirit follow what the word of god says that's how believers should do that's how we should be so we don't we shouldn't tell people to act their age because people who are their age in the rest of the world god knows what they are doing a lot of people who are my age or even younger are doing cyber crime are doing a lot of crazy stuff in the world so while that is a well-meaning statement i think it might be better for you to say you know what act according to god's word you know act according to the word of god you know the word of god will even keep will even put you in a plane that is ahead of your years uh, for, for for you know just for you to know um and then um, let me add let me add a little bit to that um we are also taught in scriptures not to say our minds but actually you know they just see your mind sometimes um we are supposed to what are, what we're supposed to do through the word of god is actually to guard it the word of god teaches us to guard our hearts the word of god teaches us to renew our minds according to the word of god the word of god also says that let your speech be seasoned the word of god also says that we are to be slow to speak so you're not just supposed to say what is on your mind basically but process it and let the word of god filter it for you basically you know you know just um we, we keep getting better we keep growing and we keep letting the word of god have its free course in our hearts i'm sure you've been blessed by um these these um nuggets today um i want to encourage you to subscribe don't just watch the video subscribe uh, leave a comment also hit the like button and share with your friends invite other people to be blessed and uh, let's do this again um, next monday same time on this channel um, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful night um, or morning wherever you are in the world and God bless you. You are God. I give